mind and desire. Mind contains all the unfulfilled desires of your lives. Not only this life, but the past as well. As you stand, you may be 40, 45, 42, but before reaching to that state, you have passed through various stages from birth to the present. Memory of each stage remains embedded into your mind. The memories of the birth, the memories of the childhood, the memories of the adulthood all remain embedded in you. But you remember only unfulfilled desires comprise your mind. Not even this life but the past lives too as I mentioned. If you look at it, in this life you have passed through various stages. At each stage there have been some unfulfilled desires that do not vanish unless there is awakening. They continue to linger on and obsess you at times. But when you die, when the childhood dies in you, the body of the child gives way to the next stage. The body dies but not the mind. All memories of the past lives, of past stages are still stored in the mind. But we are unable to access them because they lie deep within the unconscious of our beings. Meditation is the way to explore that unconscious and is the only way to convert all that is unconscious in you as conscious. Then awakening dawns. However, there are ways to access these. Mind is full of desires and ambitions. Mind convinces us with its rationalization that if desire is fulfilled, I will be happy. But it never happens so. Remember, in the first place, it is difficult to fulfill a desire and if by chance we are able to do it, by that time mind has moved to some other desires. Fulfilling desires is impossible. Maybe in future, man can make every impossible to possible, but it can never satisfy the mind. This is what we understand by desire. You have to understand the nature of desire and its relation with mind. Remember, desire is energy. However, this energy called desire has been condemned for centuries. There is another aspect of this. Almost all the so-called saints have been against it because desire is life. And they were all life negative. Desire is the very source of all that you see. Your saints were against all that is visible. They wanted to sacrifice the visible at the feet of the invisible. They wanted to cut the roots of desire so there would be no longer any possibility of life. A tremendously great urge to commit total suicide has dominated the humanity down the ages. I have a totally different concept of desire. Firstly, desire itself is existence. Desire without any object. Desire without any goal-oriented, unmotivated desire, pure desire is existence. But your desires are goal-oriented to achieve this, to achieve that. When the desire is without goals, unmotivated, it is existence. The energy called desire is the same energy as existence. You have to understand this energy that is called desire. Desire has not to be destroyed, instead it has to be purified. Desire has not to be dropped, it has to be transformed. Your very being is desire. Therefore to be against it is to be against yourself 
and to be against all. To be against it is to be against the flowers and the birds and the sun and the moon. To be against it is against all creativity. Desire is the seed of creativity. The Eastern scriptures are perfectly right when they say that God created the world because a great desire arose in him, a desire to create, a desire to manifest, a desire to be many from one, a desire to expand. But these are only metaphors. God is not separate from desire. Desire means a longing, a great longing to expand, to become huge and to become enormous, as huge as the sky. Just watch people, watch desires, and you will understand what I mean. Even in your ordinary desire, this basic thing is present. In fact, what the man who wants to have more and more money really wants is not money, but expansion. Because money can help you to expand. You can have a bigger house, you can have a bigger garden, you can have this, you can have that. Your territory will be bigger, your freedom will be bigger. With more money, you will be able to have more alternatives to choose from. The man who is after money may not know why he is after money. And this is the problem. He may think and believe that he loves money, but that is only on the surface of his consciousness. Go deep into his unconsciousness. Help him to meditate and you will be surprised and he too will be surprised to find that the desire for money is not really the desire for money. It is desire to expand, to grow. The second thing that you have to understand is that mind is nothing but desire. The heart knows no desire. You will be surprised to hear that, that all desires belong to the head. Heart lives in the present, it pulsates, beats in the here now. It knows nothing of the past and it knows nothing of the future. It is always now here. And I am not talking about a certain philosophy. I am simply stating a fact so simple. You can observe it within yourself. Your heart is beating now. It can unbeat in the past. And when it beat it in the past, it was only now. In the past it does not beat. It cannot beat in future either. The heart only knows the present. Hence it is utterly pure. It is not polluted by past memories, knowledge, experience, all that you have been told and taught by scriptures and traditions. It knows nothing of all that nonsense and it knows nothing of the future of, to, of tomorrow for it past exists no more. The future is not yet. It is utterly here. It can meditate. It is immediate. But the mind is just opposite to heart. The mind never knows now here. Either it thinks of beautiful experiences of the past or it desires the same beautiful experiences in the future. It goes on shifting between past and the present, but never stops at the present. Present is skipped completely. Thus, it is utterly unaware of the present. For the mind, the present exists not. See the point. The present is the only thing that exists. But for the mind, the present is the only thing that exists not. Past is non-existential. Future too is non-existential. But those are the things which are existential for the mind. The head is the problem while heart is the solution. The child functions from the heart. As you start growing, you start moving from heart to the head. When you graduate from the university, you have completely forgotten about the heart. You are hung up in the head. 
your whole energy has moved to the head. Now you do not know anything of reality. You are full of garbage. Certainly the scholarly garbage, the academic nonsense. You may be a PhD or delit. You know much, knowing nothing at all really. When you come out of the university, you have graduated, you have been honored with degrees and credentials of various types. Do you have the simple questions that life poses along its journey? If not, that you have wasted your 25 years in university campuses. Remember, real knowing happens in the heart, not in the head. And all the universities exist to distract your energy from heart to the head. All the universities in the world up to now have been the enemies of humanity. Their whole function is to serve the state and the church. They are the agents of the status quo. They are agents of the vested interests. They do not serve you. Instead, they serve the power, the masters, the oppressors, the exploiters. Whatsoever happens to be in power, the university serves. They are not in the service of humanity as yet. If they were really in the service of humanity, then the universities would have the place to learn rebellion. The university would create revolutionaries. The university should not, would not create conventionalists, conformists. The universities would create non-conformists, non-conventional people. It will create rebels that are adventurous and ready to risk their lives for truth. That has not happened yet. It is sad that in the name of education something ugly is continued, something very ugly. Behind the face it, something very criminal continues and this is the crime, that they divert your energies from heart to the head. They destroy your capacity to love and they force you to learn logic. Logic is more important than love for them. Thinking is more important than sensitivity. It is just putting the bullocks behind the cards. It is totally topsy-turvy. This is the reason why humanity is in such a mess. The untrue seems to be true and true seems to be untrue. They have succeeded in distorting your vision. The Buddhas have been fighting against all these vested interests. Buddha says, mistaking the false for the true and true for false, you overlook the heart and fill yourself with desire. Mind is desire and you go on filling yourself with more and more desire, more and more ambition, more and more longing for power, prestige and wealth. And you completely forget that there is a beating heart within you which already lives in God, which is already part of the ultimate law, which Nana calls as Hukumde, synergistic harmony that flows through the seasons and all that is in the existence, which is already part of the inexhaustible eternal law. You are joined from the heart to God. Your hearts are the roots in the soil of God. Your hearts are still being nourished by that which is existential, by truth. But you are not there. You have vacated the place. You live in your head, day in, day out. You live in your head. You never descend from there. Even in the night, while you are asleep, you go on rumbling in the head. Dreams and dreams upon dreams. In the day thoughts, in the night dreams, they are not different. Dream is only a translation of thinking in the language of sleep and vice versa.
Thinking is nothing but a translation of dreaming in the language of the day. You go on moving between these two, dreaming and thinking. Both are desiring. What do you think? What is there to think except desire? And what do you dream except desire? Buddha says false appears to be true because you have become false to your very own truth, to your own heart. Come back to the heart and then you will know the truth as the truth and false as false. That is enlightenment coming home. That is enlightenment coming home.